On Mastodon, somebody asked me whether it is possible for the PHP state times extension to also export a feature to convert a decimal hour to hour, minute, and second, and the other way around. Now, PHP doesn't support it yet, and it is kind of tricky to figure out what name to give this function. But the library that PHP uses underneath, Timelib, does actually export this functionality. So I thought, well, maybe we can use PHP's FFI functionality to uh, directly call these features. So I wrote myself a script to try that out. So here we have the script, and let me know, try and run this. But when I run this script, I see it uh, outputs a lot of um, errors and then a whole bunch of memory leaks. Now, the memory leaks is probably a bug in FFI, and I also don't understand why it can't find the function timelip decimal hour to HMS, because that is a symbol that is actually available in PHP, and we can find it out by using nm. When I run nm, you can see that our three symbols here, both are defined with a lower t, meaning that they're also exported symbols. So why can't PHP's FFI not find that? Well, I don't know. So why not debug this and see whether we can come up with a way of why this is a problem? Now debugging on the command line, I try to use gdb for it. And you run that instead of running just PHP with your file name and you get your bunch of errors. Instead of what you run, is that you prefix this with gdb args, which is great, but uh, we haven't disabled PHP's memory manager yet, which is often a good thing if you want to do debugging. So we also prefix this with a uh, environment variable. So this turns off Zend memory manager, meaning that all the memory operators, such like allocating and freeing memory, is now being put back to uh, what the normal operating system functions would do instead of its clever allocation uh, mechanisms. So let me now run this. And nothing happens. If you now type run, it runs the script again. You also now see that you don't see the memory leaks reported because these are being reported by PHP's memory manager, and we don't have that yet. It gives us a fatal error on line two, which as you can see from this xdebug output, is the FFI CDEF call. We need to set a breakpoint on FFI CDEF so that we can figure out what's going on. You do that in GDB by setting a breakpoint. Now, all built-in PHP functions, they will start with the C symbol, ZIM, or Zend something uh, member, and then there should be FFI, and then we need to have the function CDEF. All functions in PHP are like this. If it's just a normal function, such as uh, date, there will be zif for function underscore date. But we're interested in ffi cdef, the static method. So we'll do that and uh, set a breakpoint. And then we type run. Now, I'm getting a warning here that says source file is more recent than executable. And that is true. Uh, the source code that I have checked out in this part is not the one I have for PHP 8.2, when it's set for master, so I am going to have to fix that. I fix that by going to the right directory, and then run my build script, which sorts everything out for me. This takes a little bit of time. My build script does a whole bunch of things. It first makes sure that all the packages are installed on the system. It then checks out the right branch. It runs configure with all the right options, depending on which PHP version I'm compiling for. And then it compiles it. Now it is installed. I can close the screen and go back to GDB, where I can now uh, type run again and confirm that I want to restart the program. Once it hit a breakpoint here, it now shows you the actual first line of my source code instead of the ending curly brace that we had previously. With the command list, you can see what the code actually is. 
it does a whole bunch of things first. Uh, so let me just single step. We can't click around here, but we can type next. This just sets some things to nil. I have no idea what the validate API restriction is. Parse parameters is the line that parses uh, the per arguments that we pass into the method. Zero means minimum of zero and maximum of t. Uh, they are all optional. Um, and after that, they have not parsed it. We can now actually inspect what the value of these variables are. We can do that with print and then the name of the variable. And it says it's a Zen string. Now, Zen strings are a bit funny uh, because they include the uh, value in a member, which by definition is defined as a car, a car. So you need to cast it to a car pointer or in other words, a string. And this is indeed the bit of code that we pass into our method. We don't have lib uh, because we didn't pass in the second argument. So if we do print lib, it shows Zen string null because that makes sense. And that's how we initialize it here. So type next again, it will now skip over the lib section and then it does a bunch of things. It's, uh, I have no idea what it does, so let's find out. So it sets, um, Anyway, the default handle is RTLD default. That is uh, an argument that the C API DL open uses for loading a library. Setting an older bunch to zero. This checks whether the code that we pass in ha has some length. It does because we've just tried it out. And here it says Zend FFI parse decal. Before we dive into it, let's first open the source code actually, because that might be a bit more easier to watch what's going on. So we're currently in this line in the source code. Uh, I don't know how this works, so let's just run it and see what it does. And uh, now we have symbols. And then it uses Zend hash map for each key, key pointer over the symbols that have now been important. Now, if you want to see that, you can do print symbols, but it is in the FFI globals. So instead of just symbols, you need to use FFI globals. This is sort of a convention where the name of the extension is followed by an underscore G and that then translate into FFI lowercase and then underscore globals. And then uh, you can get to access the elements in there. So this returns a hash table. Now a hash table is a bit hard to see but luckily PHP source has some uh, trickery built in that allows for some data types to have easier dumpers in uh, GDB. But I will have to source that. And now this imported some other functions such as print ht that I can then use to print the hash table. And then you see that it found the following two symbols in my declaration, which is exactly the functions I was hoping for. It should give me a sim. What it is, I don't know. So let's find out. I'll do next. So now we're in the first time in the uh, definition. And now let's see what sim is. It's an FFI symbol. Let's inspect what's in there. So it says it is a sim function. That makes sense. Let's have a look at the source code to see what it's trying to do with that. So it loops over it here. We're currently not doing a variable, but we are uh, having a function in here. So then it runs this uh, section. So let's see what happens if we skip through line 3001 and what mangled name contains. Now what does mangled name contain? It's the same function, so that's great. DL fetch symbol is a C library function that fetches a symbol for from a handle uh, and then a name. In any case, after running this, what is our address? And it says it's null. And it shouldn't say no, it should have found our symbol. And I don't know why it has done that. But I will set a breakpoint on line 3001. Delete the first breakpoint and then run again. 
So instead of now doing next, I'm going to do step to see what it actually done. And you can see it does indeed do deal sim uh, with a handle of null and a name without the underscore, which is what we expect it to do. But why can it not find that? That is the question. Running next here makes no difference because it I don't have the source code of dlsim.c. So I don't know how to debug into that, right? But it returns null because the address is still null. But we certainly have the symbol as we've shown with nm. I'm pretty sure that a lowercase t means it's exported, but let's just make that sure by checking the nm manual page. The T means the symbol is in the text code section, which means it is a function or executable code. It doesn't distinguish here between an uppercase and lowercase, so maybe it says so earlier. So the documentation here says that if lowercase, the symbol is usually local. If uppercase, the symbol is global or external. So I actually got that wrong. Uh, for it to be exported, be able to find by linkers, uh, it needs to be an exported function, and it apparently isn't so. And that is also the reason why the function isn't then not found. So that means it's actually not exported from TimeLab. Let's see if other functions from TimeLab actually are. And none of them are. This makes no sense whatsoever. So right, it's not exported, so we can't do this then. Well, at least we find out why. So if we actually have a look at which symbols PHP has for timelib, I shall explain a little bit more about what it actually is and how these work. See, what this actually tells you is some number, which is sort of the memory location of where the symbol is located. The symbol is pretty much uh, a name, and with this name is a whole bunch of code that can be run. For example, timelib add is available on this memory address, and if you actually use a debugger and assembler, you can actually look at what that code actually does. Not going to do it right now. But these symbols can be used, um, can be referenced by other parts in the application to do something with. Now, symbols can exist in two different ways. You have symbols that can only be accessed by local code. These are called local symbols. And that means that they are only available in the same binary. Now, if you have a shared object that's not the same binary, as so to speak, which means that if a shared object does not export its symbols, for example, the timelap functions that we are seeing here, then non-local code, for example, PHP itself, that has loaded the shared object, cannot then make use of these symbols. Similarly, unexported symbols, their name list can easily be stripped out of a process and then you don't even see them anymore. We can demonstrate that by using strip. And then when I run nm, there's no symbols in there anymore. Now, if we, for example, if we have a shared object, like I've done earlier for timelib, if we run nm on timelib, then you see that some of those symbols are lowercase t, they're local, but others are an uppercase letter, which means these are exported from this binary to be used by other binaries. And that is often how any sort of uh, library, like a MySQL client library or things, are used. Now, if I strip this and run, time, and run nm, then we have no symbols. So how would a process know what's in there, right? That is a bit of a tricky bit. Even with a strip binary, external programs still need to be able to find the symbols. So they must be available in some way. It's just that NM no longer shows them. 
if you open the library with read elf, read elf is the binary format that Linux uses, so we can do minus s for sims. And then when we grab for time loop again, you see all the symbols that are now exported, but it won't have the unstripped symbols in there. Now, if I remake my library and use read elf, you also see the local symbols in there. If I strip them, then these are gone. Meaning that stripping out the symbols removes the names that the symbol table uses for finding the symbols. Now, PHP's FFI requires the name of the symbols to be present in order to then do something dynamic with. If they're not exported, if they're not global symbols, you can't do that. So how do we fix that? Well, we can of course load timelib as a shared object, but we don't want to do that in PHP. So instead, a way of approaching it is specifically exporting the symbols to be always globally available. So let me go back to PHP. Well, to mark exports always available as, um, as export, you get to use an attribute. So I'm defining a macro at time like export API with the attribute to make the visibility default, meaning they're exported again and can be used externally. I need to modify uh, the files themselves to add this uh, attribute. So timelap, timelap export API is the one I want to export, right? So I want to do that for decimal hour and the other, other directions as well. And for good measure, I'm doing this one as well. So if I now make PHP again, Now I've recompiled PHP, I can run NM again and see what happened to my symbols. And you now see that the symbols that I've just added this special attribute to are now exported and you can see that by capital T. By grabbing for the space T space, you get to see all the ones that I've exported. Now I've done this because these symbols are now exported, FFI should now work. So let me go to the FFI example directory. And, and as a reminder, show you the code again. I have decimal hour to HMS and HMS to decimal hour, which I have now exported. You can see those here. Now you should be able to run the script. And it indeed gives me the right output, which we would expect it for 9.25, because it's of course exactly a quarter of an hour. If you change that to something else, say 33333, three, 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 then when we run it now, you can also get the right result, which is nine hours, 90 minutes and 60 seconds, which sounds like a strange rounding issue that we probably need to have a look at at some point, because that looks like a bug. In any case, I still hope this was somewhat useful to show how I go about figuring out with GDB what is actually going on in a PHP. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.